Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah, uh, we, we have to make these little children feel welcome to church. Okay? Um, and I want us now to pray with them. Uh, they are ready to go to their church. We, we, we are growing. I told you we are here to grow. And uh, I am looking forward to seeing many of you graduate and start families and uh, bring your children here. The other time I invited the alumni, you remember? And my target is that um, they will choose us as their local church, that they will consider waging from here, that they will consider okay, being part of this community, right? And today's sermon is going to continue in that direction. The only way we can grow the church is if we, 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 we choose to, to belong. When you choose to belong, then you can, uh, you can participate in every way. Praise the Lord. Amen. So let us stretch our hands towards the little children and pray for them. Father, thank you for the children, for each one of them. Thank you for their parents. Thank you for the teachers. Thank you, Lord, for our church here, for the children that is starting. I pray that as they go to learn, that you will be present, that you will instruct them yourself, that you will, uh, you will inspire them, inspire their teachers, watch over them, bless them. I pray that they will love you, that they will never depart from your ways, that all the days of their lives, Lord, they will give themselves as a living sacrifice, pleasing and acceptable before your sight. And so, Lord, as they go, go with them. Teach them, correct them, and guide them in your ways to the glory and to the honor of your name. Lord, this morning we pray for pregnant mothers that are in labor wards, uh, that are um, expecting to give birth. We pray for them that your grace may abound in their lives, that your hand of grace and mercy may locate them this morning. Lord, we pray for people, couples that are believing, trusting you for children. Lord, some of them may be represented by, by us in this place. I pray for such couples that, Lord, you will open their wombs, that, Lord, you will um, surprise, that you will, you will make them glad because every good gift comes from you. To you alone be the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. So, children, enjoy your church. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. So now you, you forgive me for reiterating this verse, eh? but I, I just learned it, I learned it this week, eh? and it stuck with me. It's, uh, I, I said it earlier, it's in Romans 14, the very last verse. It says, everything that you do not do in faith is sin. So for whatsoever you do without faith is sin, all right? And now that we know that everything that we do that is not in faith is sin, we're going to reaffirm our faith, yeah? More so our commitment to not sin, amen? We're going to reaffirm our faith with the Apostles' Creed in the Come and Worship books, page 7. Let us all get on our feet. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Yes. Um, so, uh, in this moment, I would like us to take our seats. <coughs> yes. oh, oh, 
sorry. Let, let, us, let us first share in the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Yes. Uh, as you know, we are drawing towards the end of the semester. And this is a time, this is a moment we are going to reflect upon how the semester has moved. God has worked in our lives, not so. God has been there this semester. Now, because God has been there, let us testify before the Lord. So if you have, if you have a, if you have something God has done for you, something unique, it may not be unique, it may be just the capacity to breathe. This is your moment to come and testify. Just raise to your feet and come to the front and take the opportunity. Let's put the devil to shame by testifying in the house of the Lord. Amen. Yes. Let's give them a round of applause as they come. Praise God, church. Praise God. I want to thank God for my life and everyone who is here. I also want to thank God for bringing us all the way from the beginning of the semester up to the end of the semester. I also want to thank God that in first semester of first year, my performance was not all that as I expected. But then in second sem, when we came back, I had performed better. I want to thank God. Then I also thank God that this semester, I didn't have issues with tuition and clearance and all that. I cleared early enough so that I could settle and read. I also want to thank God that my sister who has been having issues with delivery and birth and all that. This time the doctor said she has no complications. I want to thank God for that. Praise God, church. Me, I want to thank God for the gift of life, for the gift of family. I thank God that this time is ending. It has really been hectic and like we, we, we began when we thought things were going to be as usual, but right now they told us that you're going to do your NEB exams. So we were like, eh, how are we going to do those exams? But I thank God that so far we've been doing papers, but I thank God that I've excelled in my exams and he has given me wisdom <laughs> and... I thank God for my friend on Monday. They beat him a pave on the head. So we all thought that he had died, but we thank God that he's still alive. Morning, friends. Morning, church. God is good. And all the time. I'd like to thank God. Uh, okay, my name is Talemo Alfred Kakuraki. I'm in year one, same one, uh, School of Medicine. But I would like to thank God that uh, ever since this semester started, it has actually been an eye opener in terms of leadership because I don't take it for granted that first time I contest to be at least in a leadership position, I actually be win. Like, it's the first time. Ever since primary, I didn't actually stand for any position. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then I'd like to thank God for the gift of parents. They're always providing the fruits. The fruits I always try to share with my friends. Golola. Yes, my, my, my roommates. Yes, that. Uh, we, we don't have any complications of sickness. So that has been my parents, and okay, they work in hand of, in the hand of what, of God. So I don't take it for granted. And in terms of performance, yes, I've seen God's hand everywhere. The gift of friends, we are always discussing, and I like the class because they all show the signs of seriousness, and I like that environment. It's not by, it's not, it's. I don't take it for granted because it's a real competitive class I am in. So, yeah, I thank God for it. Uh, praise God. Uh, 
I would like to thank God for the fact that uh, this semester has been uh, generally successful uh, despite all the health complications I went through. And I would particularly want to thank God uh, for the coursework that I did because some of them I did them when I was actually very ill and I thought that maybe I would get reduced or fail terribly. But I would like to thank God that uh, he made me sail through and I actually even performed better than the previous semesters when I would be fine. I'd like to thank God for that. Right, uh, praise God. Yes, uh, I also want to thank God for, for the new people I met this semester. Uh, that is to say the, the young ones, but also the law school worship team, I think I got to know most of those people better this semester. So I really thank God for, for the, the friendships I have made. Amen? Yeah, I've never testified about that, but I really, I really thank God. Yeah. So um, some of you may be there and uh, you have your testimony, eh? but you feel like maybe it's, it's, it's unique. Eh? Not in the category of testimonies. Eh? You celebrated a birthday, engagement, eh? anything that is out of the ordinary, and you want it to be recognized, this is your moment. Call it a, cele a celebration, so to say. Could be your parents' anniversary. Could be your sister's engagement. They have to be yours. <laughs> so if anyone has a celebration, uh, you're, you're welcome to come and, 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 you know, let us know so that we may, we may rejoice with you. I'm, I'm going to take it that those were covered in testimonies. It seems nothing out of the normal happened. But we praise God for that. Yes. Um, we, right about now, we are going to, we are going to offer in the house of the Lord. I have been informed that there are, there are people worshiping with us for the first time. So if it's your first time here on a Sunday, not in community worship, but, but on a Sunday. Yes, uh, wow, they're, they're, they're quite a number. <laughs> yes, we'd like to, to welcome you. We have services every Sunday from 9 to 11. We pray that this may be your church henceforth. Amen? Amen? And we pray that you may see the Lord working in your life for the time you spend in this church. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I'm going to invite Reverend Alex. He's going to introduce the preacher before we have offertory. All right? Well, um, Ezekiel, if you could come over. Let us appreciate this man. some of you to come and, and, and help out in leading services. You tell me you're very busy. But this man is very busy. I know he's very busy. Um, he's doing uh, um, what is the name of your course? <laughs> <laughs> medicine and surgery. He's doing Bachelor of Medicine and Surgery. Very busy. Year two? Year two. Year two. And sometimes he goes home and his home is, is Nalia. Is, yes, quite far away. So you see, the, the, uh, serving God takes commitment. And, and, and it's my prayer for you that uh, every day as you study here, that God will show you that one thing you can do for him in this chapel. That God will show you that one thing you can do and give your best efforts. Because there is that one thing that you can you can do. And, and it starts here. Serving God starts here. That is how you will be in position to go out at uh, maybe at a uh, uh, um, uh, hospital and start a devotion there. Or for, for the lawyers, you go at this law firm and influence and, and start things there. You know, it, 
things can't just start there. They, they, they have to start here. This is, this is the training ground. So, uh, Brother Gola, may God bless you. These are guys who never get retakes. <laughs> the other day I had some people say that, uh, you know, if you want to become good president at UCU, you have to serve in the chapel. Then I think somehow they, they, they support you. No, we don't give special support to these people. There is some special grace that God bestows upon these people. You be, yes. There, there is nothing, okay, there is nothing. At least I don't, I, I am rare at the School of Medicine, and I don't know your lecturers, Mr. Gola, but I am, uh, the spirit of excellence is upon you, and, and, and you are excelling. The, 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 the sky is no longer the limit. God is blessing you. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Uh, if you also want me to say some nice things in your life, please come and come very close. Eh? You have to be very close. Eh? Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, we do have people that are really. Uh, Papa, it's good to see you. Papa, if you could stand up. Papa Rogers Sevalu. Yeah, it's good to see you. Very welcome to your church. Yes, you are very welcome. Thank you for the ministry you do. Um, I have seen uh, quite uh, some new faces today. Uh, anyone worshiping with us? Uh, this is your first time here on a Sunday. If you could put up your hand. Rukundo, uh, have you been here before on a Sunday? Very much. Okay. In, any other persons? Yes. Thank you very much. I see someone behind there. If you could stand up. Um, yes, if you could stand. Thank you. Let me ask the person seated next to you to, uh, to give you a hug on my behalf. A hug on my behalf. Yes. Who will that be? Ah, good. Good. Uh -huh. Mary. Mary, stand up. Um, yes. Mary is my little sister, and uh, she studies at uh, Kabale University. But uh, you, you study Bachelor of uh, Industrial Chemistry, right? Yes. She's finishing year one. She's my blood sister. Yes. Yes. Very welcome. Very welcome. Sorry? <laughs> yes, yes, you can hug her. Yes. Mm. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So good to see you. She came in the night. She must be very tired. And uh, I have my sister, my other sister here, if you could come over here. Um, uh, this one, you need to hear her voice. If you could come over here. She, man, many of you were closing your eyes when she led us in the intercessions. Eh? So you need to see her. You didn't see her. She's, uh, okay, let me ask her to greet us, tell us what she does and, you know, the details about herself, if she's married and stuff like that. Praise God, Church. Praise God, Church. I'm by the name Nabu Kenya Sise. I'm a student at UCU. I'm in my third year pursuing Masters of Divinity. In short, I'm studying to be a reverend. Yes. I think that's all. Are you married? Uh, where do you come from? Where are you born in Mukono? No. Uh, <laughs> I'm a born of Nakasongola and I'm a Muruli by tribe. Status that one I'm still waiting upon the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let us clap for her once more. And, uh, and I will charge her for, for the announcement. 
that she's single. She will pay for it. Anyways, um, it's good to be at church this morning. I know you guys are very busy. Uh, you're going to do your exams tomorrow. And uh, today we are quite many, I think, uh, slightly a little more than the usual number. I don't know whether... <laughs> so I want to encourage you to always be many, eh? Not only when you're going to do exams. Eh? One time I took a group of students to Buvuma for a mission, and somehow um, they, they, they were very strong waves on the, uh, the lake, uh, were traveling on Lake Victoria. And... Um, the captain told us uh, that um, um, things were not good. So he warned us, said um, we might get stuck on the waters and probably spend the whole day uh, the, 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 because um, the, it was, uh, the, the, what is it called? The ferry was becoming more and more unstable. It was, the waves were too strong. Uh, that time I, I saw everyone pray. In, in, you know, people were praying, and people were calling upon Jesus in their, you know, um, respective languages. Everyone was so scared. People trusted God. I saw everyone trust God that time. Okay? And I was saying, why do you want to wait for that time when, when the the ferry is sinking. Why, why do you want to wait for, for that time? So I, I want to challenge us to purpose daily to trust in God, daily to cultivate a personal and loving relationship with him daily. Okay? Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, it gives me much joy to receive uh, someone very special to us as uh, Kampala Campus. And uh, she's ministered here many, many times. At least every semester she comes here. She's a mother to us. She's, um, uh, she's a teacher. She's a social worker. Uh, she's a Beneza's teacher. You know Ebenezer, my, my son? She's a Beneza's teacher. She's a social worker. She's a married woman. She's a mother. Uh, certainly she will tell us a little more about herself. So, beloved, join me to uh, make her feel welcome and comfortable to the city campus. And yes. I must commend you. Our clapping has really improved. <laughs> Clap for yourselves. Has really improved. There is one thing that is still lacking. When when we are worshiping, when we are singing, some people sing like. Uh, and then some people do like this, and they look at me. Some people do like this, and they look at me. And then they go back and say, "Thank you, God." You are the one to make church vibrant. You get it. No, because I can't clap on your behalf. The other day I told you that there is a book I read in theology in, when, when I was studying uh, in, in theology school. It is called Worship is a Verb. I think it's one of my favorite books. And, and, and the author who is called Robert Weber, you can, you can search about him, search about the book. Robert Weber articulates that uh, no one can worship on your behalf. Just as you cannot delegate eating. You cannot delegate going to the toilet. You cannot delegate worship. It's an amazing book. Okay? And he encourages all pastors to allow opportunity to their congregations to worship God. Okay? To, 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 to allow you time to worship God yourselves. So, if we improve on that, we'll be good to go. But the clapping has really improved. Now, Mrs. Deborah Mugawe, Mama, you are very welcome to the city campus. Mm. Thank you, and thank you. We, um, we are truly excited and looking forward to 
receiving from what God has put on, you know, the heart of the mother. Hallelujah. Amen. Before she does come, let me invite us. Let me invite the choir. I, I, I want to see vibes in the choir. say it in Uganda. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to praise the Lord. Amen. As we offer into his house. Echitiwa chideli yesu Kubanga ye mulunji atuwate ebinu chibinti ya lasi we mokamo ya tajulu kuke chitiwa e chitiwa orachi o akosechi akosechi to you. We pray, Lord, that you will bless them, even those that will use them for your glory. We pray for those who have not been able to bring, that, Lord, 
Next time you enable them to have something to bring before you because you told us that we should not come to your house empty-handed. We bless you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. You may take your seats. My name is Deborah. I am the last born of 14 children. One mother, one father. Married properly in church. My parents, they were born again. I grew up in a village, but now it's town. It has turned into a town. I was a beloved child, but I was not given to Chejo. You know Chejo? Eh? I was not pampered, but I was loved. And I was also disciplined. You know when you love somebody, you do what? You discipline them. I grew up doing all the activities they do in the village. Digging, looking after cows, going to the well, carrying pots and carrying, uh, 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 what are they called, tins. We used to call them tins. Uh, what are they called in Luganda? Edebe. Some of you are very, very young. Who, is, who knows Edebe? Among the older generation, you know Edebe? Okay, cooking oil used to come in tins that were rectangular, not the circular ones. So we used to cut them, and then we would go and use them to fetch water or to keep things. So that's the generation we grew up in. And then as we grew up, things started changing. Because during our time, we never used to go to school with shoes. If you came to, with, to school with shoes, you would be the out of place. Everyone would be like, hey, oh, please don't even get near them. They are so special. They are so rich. So we went to school. I went to a day school in Gayaza, Church of Uganda. And we used to be smart children from a fairly fairly poor, fairly rich family. So we're medium. Because our father was at first rich, and then when, okay, we're at first rich, then our father died. And when he died, everything that he owned went with him. Some of you have experienced those challenges. Who has had such a, an experience? Anyone here? Uh-huh, you have. You had everything, and then all of a sudden you have nothing. You only have to scratch to go to school. You scratch to give an offertory. You scratch to buy a uniform. You scratch to get meat. Maybe you eat it only on Christmas. That's the kind of life that we grew up in. Then, by the way, we, we watch patches. You people, you don't even know patches. Do you know patches? They put patches in your uniform, patches in your dress for home. And I remember that they bought for me a dress. It was lemon green. There is somebody in lemon green somewhere there. Some of you don't know colors, especially boys. Girls, what might you know colors? Stand up, you is in lemon green. I had a dress like that. That color up, it's called lemon green. So, that dress had an inside, let me call it, uh, what they call it a lining. Yeah, okay? So, because of scarcity, I cut out the lining, or they cut out the lining, it would be a dress for casual, and then the top one would be for church. Yes, and that's how we grew up. Then we would sew the ends with our own hands. Some of you don't even know how to hold a needle. Eh? You don't know, do you know? Especially the guys. You take to the tailors, even the girls, you have tailors everywhere, buttons you take to the tailors. For us, we grew up in a, a country or in a situation where your hands were used. Your brain worked more than in the book. The, the, you, you see videos passing around about China, how their children study in school. That's how we studied in school, making baskets, making our brooms, sweeping our compound, sweeping roads, collecting rubbish, digging the, the, the community roads. That's how we grew up. But when we, the country became rich, that was during the Seven's regime. You people, you don't sweep. You find when they have swept for you. You don't clean anything. Even at home, you have mates. You don't even know how to wash your clothes, some of you. You don't know how to arrange your wardrobe. You don't know how to comb your hair. You almost want to put your head and somebody combs your hair. 
You can't plait your hair. I know how to plait my hair. I plaited it until it got long. For many years, I plaited my hair. Why? I didn't have the money. And if I had it, it wasn't for that. It was worth doing something else, maybe going to my mother to see her or buying for her a loaf of bread. That's how we grew up, in that community. And when we were growing up, we would, at home, we were farmers, just like many of the people in the village. But our home, because we were a big family, 14, we were very, very hardworking and productive. Not because of number, but our culture was, we were very hardworking. So we'd grow crops, and the only thing we could do was to, sh to feel part of the community, was to share these things. Whether it was dodo, we'd carry baskets of dodo around the, the whatever, the village. Whether it was avocado, we'd carry baskets. You go this side, you go this side. We had many baskets at home, so they would send us. So, so we had namwandus. Who knows what namwandu means? Eh? <laughs> you know this dot com generation. Some words have died. What is namwandu? Eh, Namwandu here in Uganda is a widow. My mother was also a widow. So she cared so much for the widows. So we'd go to the widows and take their things. We'd also go to the old women who have lost their, okay, whose children have either died or are no longer there. They, they are alone. We'd also go there. We'd sleep for them houses. We'd wash for them clothes. You know, we would do things as a community. If my mom ever found a child on the road playing, instead of going to the well, she would beat them or tell them, I'll report you. Today, your child, you will not even allow the neighbor to touch. You'll even sue them. And that's how we are spoiled. When the neighbor tells you, your child, I found them here, they were playing with this and that, they stole my sugar. My, you think I don't have sugar? That's the community we live in today. Your parents will defend you to the core, and you are very happy about it, and you think it is love. It is not love. That's not the community of the believers. When we are in Christ, wrong is wrong, and right is right. You are going to do exams. And let me tell you how Christians fail in exams. I am not saying failing as in getting poor marks. How they fail good, they cheat. They, because they think they are in a community, they think they have the obligation to tell each other answers. Hmm? You know, you know, I didn't want her to fail. It would look like I am very mean. Hello? That is not Christian. Okay, I didn't even tell her the answers. Me, I just put there the paper. If she wants or he wants to copy, he copies. You are you are cheating. You are teaching people to cheat. Some of you are asking lecturers, smiling to them so that they can give you those coursework marks that you missed out of 60. You know, ma master, I don't even know how you call them. You know, for us, we used to call teachers masters. But lecturers, we used to call them what? Did we used to call them titles? What mister? What doctor? Whatever. You, Dr. Sam, please, Dr. Sam, you know one people that I was sick. Just please, that course work. Give me some marks. I don't want to fail. You are doing those things like non believers. A community of believers is disciplined, does what is right. They earn what they work for. If they, you don't work for something, you don't earn it. I have had my children repeat classes, not because they are not brilliant, but because for us we believe that if you have not passed, you have not passed. And that's it. If I take you to a school and you don't do well and you need to repeat a class, if I look for a, another school that can admit you and you do interviews and you fail, you will repeat. If you pass the exams given to you at the school, you will continue. I keep telling them, wherever your brain takes you, 
that's where you will go. And I am not saying that you are stupid. If your brain does not allow you to pass a certain maybe coursework, accept the fact that you have not passed. But if it is out of laziness, then you cannot blame anyone. You cannot even blame God. That is just you. You have chosen to do that. And I want to say that sometimes when we are in a community of believers, we don't want to share things. I want to go to the scriptures. Let's go to chapter 2 of Acts, verse 42. Chapter 2 of Acts, verse 42. They were devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they committed, continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes. They ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily by daily. If you are that kind of community that prays together, learns together, shares together, does many things together. If someone is sick, you take care of them. If they don't know what, like for example, they don't understand a certain course unit, you discuss with them to understand, you are going to grow in numbers. The university will also grow. If you go to your lecturers and they help you out where you are stuck, we shall grow in numbers. Because a community that lives as a community, because a community in basic language is a group of people that live together and work together. If you are not that kind, then you don't belong to the community. You are an outcast. For example, we cannot say that somebody who came here to steal your mobile phones is part of this community. They have just sneaked in to steal phones. If you belong to a community that is Christian and that is of believers, you, you follow what you're supposed to do. When we are praying, you are praying. When we are mourning, you are mourning. Do you know your neighbor's name? You are, I think you have two, two courses here. Not so. It's law and medicine, right? Look around. You start counting how many people you know. I'm going to pick people and they tell me how many people they know by name. Just look around. I tell choir members, don't tell me your choir member friends. I, I look outside the choir. And some people are bending down. Huh? They will want to see your face. Me, I only know like four, eh, how many people? Reverend Kamoga, <laughs> Reverend Nabukenya. Nabukenya. <laughs> you are Ezekiel? Ezekiel. Uh, I know the one who read Favor, the one who read the portion. And others, honestly, I don't remember you, but I remember her face, the one who is on the drum, and who else? Others, I don't really know you so much. But have you noticed that there are people you know? The lady in blue, how many people do you know by name? Four. Thank you for being honest. What about this lady in exchange which has yellow and purple? You know around 10. Okay. What about you, madam? Boys are, guys, I'm coming. Don't worry when I call you boys. I have a boy in, at universe, I call him a boy. Yes? You know about six. Yes, sir. How many do you know around? They are like seven. Try to get to know people's names. That's a community. 
You learn where they stay. You learn what they do. You don't have to do what they do if it is wrong. But you need to mind other people's business that is not sinful. If it is sinful, you can know it, but you help them to overcome. Not so? Yes. So when we live in a community of believers, that's part of our work. We pray together, we intercede, we sing, we dance. By the way, I was so amused. I saw people standing like stick, eh? not a stick or a tree, a tree like this. Now, you people, you don't know that you'll get old like me and you can't dance. You better dance when you're still young. Let me tell you, I envy those people who can dance. There is a lady who came here singing and she, where is she? There are two. There is one there and there is also another one who was in, where is she? I don't see her. Hey, the Sunday school teacher. Oh my God, she was, let me tell you, I made all these dances. Eh? And I had energy. And people loved me. The children, when they would see me, because I'm a social worker, I used to work with children in slum communities and poor communities. So every time they would see teacher Deborah, they would know there is singing, there is dancing. I knew every song. When I started, we must dance and dance as I do. I go backward, we go backward, forward, forward, sideways, sideways. I twist my, I twist, I would do all sorts of things because I was part of that community. When you are part of a community, you do what is worth the community. Do you want this community to be a boring community? You stay standing. Do you want the singers to be boring? Let them sing. I will sing Hosanna, hallelujah. I will sing Hosanna. Dancing round before the throne of glory. I will sing Hosanna. I will clap Hosanna. I will clap Hosanna. Now, what you say I'm boring? But if I say, I will sing Hosanna. Hallelujah. I will sing Hosanna. Dancing round before the throne of glory. I will sing Hosanna. Will you clap Hosanna? I will clap Hosanna. Hallelujah. I will clap. Clapping round before the throne of glory. I will clap. I will jump Hosanna. I will jump Hosanna. Hallelujah. Before the throne of glory, I will jump Hosanna. I will wave Hosanna. I will wave Hosanna. Hallelujah. I will wave Hosanna. Hosanna. Waving on before the throne of glory. I will wave Hosanna. I will twist Hosanna. I will twist Hosanna. Hallelujah. I will twist. Hosanna, oh, oh, twisting round before the throne of glory. I will twist Hosanna. Will you jump Hosanna? I will jump Hosanna. Hallelujah. I will jump Hosanna. Uh -huh. Jumping round before the throne of glory. I will jump Hosanna. I will greet Hosanna. Hosanna, I will see it, Hosanna. Hallelujah, I will see it, Hosanna. Sitting round before the throne of glory, I will see it, Hosanna. Now I am already tired because I'm getting older. Those days, that was just katono, katono. Eh? I would sing, I would dance. In our community, that's what is supposed to happen. You come to university, you come to this church, behave like one of them. Bring life. If it is prayer, pray. If it is reading the word, read. 
they call upon you to read. I am not sure. I am not sure that I can actually stand up there. But when they tell you to scream in the hostel, you can scream. Yeah? When they tell you to read the service, I'm not sure whether I can lead. You just read a book. What is this? And pray. Not so? Yes, that's all we do. So let's know that we are a community of believers and we must do things together. I want us to go to Acts chapter 4, verse 32. Acts chapter 4. Verse 32 says, all the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And God's grace was so powerful at work in them. All that there was eh, in them all, that there was no needy person among them. For from time to time, those who owned land or houses sold them, brought the money from the cells and put it at the apostles' feet. And it was distributed to anyone who had need. I think I'll stop there. How much do you help others? Or you only spend time looking at the poor, the bad shoe, the old shoe, the, the faded jeans, the faded t-shirt, the not being smart. Can you share? Do you share as believers? When you see your friend is in need, do you share with them? Is there anyone who told somebody they are smart in the week? You told somebody in the week you are smart. Not because you want to have a relationship with them. Ah, for real, for real. You told somebody they were smart. Eh, for real. Not because of this other thing, eh? Okay, good. Thank you very much. So when we see people that they are very smart, that's a community of believers. They are not envious. And you don't say, I want that dress like yours. At now when we are dressed the same way, eh? How shall we look like? Where did you buy it? I also want to go there. Ah, ah. Now we know your rule. You ask her, where do you buy these dresses? She takes you there. You also choose a nice dress. Boys, I don't know where you buy your shirts. I used to buy for my son from either men who, eh, who walk around if they were second hand or from the shops. I would send him to buy for himself from the shops. So I don't know much about boys, especially when they are older like you. He told me he prefers to give him money. He buys what he wants. And I was so surprised when he bought, what are these shoes called? The ones which are clothed shoes. They are, clo eh? they are not pleasure. What do you call them? Sneakers. Eh? You call them what? Sneakers. For me, I was so amused that you guys, you like sneakers. Because during our time, they were for the poor. <laughs> Am I lying? We used to call them Lusejera. And now they are, they are on. Eh? It is the thing. Eh? That during our time, you wear shoes which are clothed, like a cloth. And now they cost 70,000. And the ones, I, you know, I was like, this is what you like. And then my daughter, I took her to um, butter. I would buy shoes of 90,000. Maybe I've told this story before. 80,000, 90,000. Then one time I go to school, she's wearing different shoes of 10,000. I look at her, I am like, Mada, you borrowed shoes? Huh? She said, mm -hmm. how they pretend when you go for a visitation. I said, I'll get her when you get home. So we got home. I told her, ah, tell me, where did you get those shoes we are wearing? Mommy, you know the pocket money you gave me? I sent someone to buy for me. They are across the school. I said, why? Why would you buy shoes of 10,000? Mommy, because all other children, that's what they wear. You see, the community, her community was not wearing butter shoes of 90,000. Why she wanted to fit in the what? In the community. Have many pairs, even if they cost little. That is the, your community. So try to live in the community as it lives. 
Don't try to overshadow the community. Some of you want to fly in jets. There is a, somebody who was flying in a jet to go for visitation, right? In some school. A drone. Prom. It was a prom. By the way, I think they banned them. Not so. I was the happiest. They banned them. Formerly they were banned. Maybe they're happening, but formerly they were banned by the government. So, you come in a jet, don't over. Hmm? You have 30 shots, share ya. Here they said no one lacked anything. All believers had one thing in common. They shared. How are we sharing? You have earrings like 30 pairs. Why don't you share with one who has one? Tell them, Sister Jang, Murumi Yange, come. I have a here. Can you please pick some? Boys, I don't know much about you. But if you have many shirts, call your brother if he wants. Tell him I have many shirts here. Can you pick? Because I know the things that disturb you today. Food. You have money to go out. Take your friends out. fruit fruit. fruits every week. Eh? So for him, he's a giver of fruit so that you stay healthy. He's a medical doctor, is he? Eh? You get fruits. Yes. These guys would sell things they would bring at the disciples' feet, then they would distribute. How many of you would allow this today? You would say, it is my right. And the lawyers, you have spoiled our society. It is my money. It is my right. I have a right not to give my neighbor. I don't have an obligation. Come on. Are you a Christian? Your neighbor's children don't go to school. You have more than fees, more money than even double your fees. Get a, a child you can sponsor while you are still at school. Take them to a, a, a school in the local place and pay for their school fees from your tuition. You can do that. Some of you are very rich. You come from very rich families. If you can pay five million, some of you, it's just nothing. You can pay 300,150 for a child. And you support your neighbor's child. Go and treat them. Go visit them. Find, check, check them whether they are healthy. Lawyers, advise your neighbors. Advise people that you know who are struggling with issues. Don't ask for money all the time. We shall go to chapter 5. Now, there was a man called Ananias and Sapphira. To cut the long story short, they were part of this group. They sold what they had, and then they kept some. When they kept some, God was not happy. And so, they were all struck dead. So sometimes when we live in a community and we don't live with the community or in the community, we are there, but we are actually not there. God can take away our blessings. And I am not saying you only have to share money and things are not. You can share a prayer. Go and pray for people. Go and preach the gospel. If your sister's here is not looking nice, tell her. Eh? Because actually, if I asked you, how many of you told your sister or brother that you need to comb your hair? Maybe I'll not see her hand. Or your hair is not neat. Maybe I'll not see her hand. You don't want to hurt them. Okay? You want to be fine. To have friendships. But the community has discipline, has order, has norms, has values, has customs. Are you abiding by those customs and values and norms? First of the country, next of the tribe, third of being a Christian. What will take you to heaven is, did you actually do something that was good, that was right, that was proper? These days there is a gospel they preach that once saved, always saved. Jesus died for us on the cross. All sins were covered. It doesn't matter whether you sin. You will still go straight to heaven. Some, thank you very much. You continue. When you die, the angels will all come in a different way. 
when we get saved, our character changes. Because we live in a community, you don't live alone. One time, my daughter told me, but for me, mommy, I, I dress what I like. Hey, my dear, this is a community. We are living among people. If you are living in a forest eh, with monkeys, you wouldn't dress like that. Because you wouldn't care. So I told her, hey, move. Just remove. Because we are living with people. She said, it doesn't matter. You know, you know the girls, there is a the reason it. You know, it doesn't matter. And the guys, even if I don't comb my hair, the guys are even if I don't comb my hair. I don't know why mom, my mom is always on my case. And I'm like, I am on your case. Yeah, when they make their voices big, I also make mine big because it can be. But I don't know what's wrong with mommy. Yes, you don't know what's wrong. But it's because I want you to fit in society and to be like somebody who loves God. Don't look like non-believers. You copy everything they bring, you copy. Are you a copycat? I have some few minutes and I'm about to end. Let's go to Acts chapter, sorry, Romans chapter 12, verse 13 to 20. Share with the Lord's people who are in need, practice hospitality. I don't have to repeat that. Do I have? No. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse. Is that easy? No, but we have to do that. Rejoice with those who rejoice, mourn with those who mourn. I've already told you that. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud. I have told you that. Don't think that you are great. Some of us had rich parents. Rich, 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 rich. Never for an we remained with nothing. I'm not telling you your father will die tomorrow, your mother. No, 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 no. But God is very... Is a person you cannot understand. Your parents might even be alive and rich, and then you, you turn out not as rich as them. Or you can lose that very nice thing that you treasure so much because you have forgotten about God, and you think that you are great. Some of you, you move with your phones when you are touching. I mean, just because you want somebody to see. The girls, I see them when they paint their nails, they move like this. And I am like, come on, it doesn't have to be this. And you know, you know, my dear, I don't, you, know, you just want to show off. That's pride. And then when they play to do hairstyles, they're always touching their hair. You know, I know women think more than men think. They're always touching their hair. And you're like, eh, 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 how, what do you think about my hair? Is it okay? It's good. You know? Eh? <laughs> And me, I'm like, Kasta was this severe when you me, it is okay. Hey? And once one person tells you it is not okay, every week you have to change, or every two weeks. <laughs> hey? Don't be proud. Some of you are very brilliant. You have brains. Hey? And you walk like there is no ground even because of your brain. Hmm? People ask you questions and they're like, you mean you didn't understand? It was so easy. The lecturer was so clear about it. What didn't you understand? We have discussed several times, and every time you keep saying you don't understand. When will you ever understand? <laughs> the same question, the same question comes. The same person, the same question. You know, I think you need to leave our group of discussion. Yeah, you know, me, I'm tired. You, we leave that girl. Let her get out of our group. Me, I'm tired of her. Every time I don't understand. That's why she cuts lectures. Ah, ah. Pride. Just accommodate her. She may not pass, or he may not pass, but at least bear with them. Don't be proud. It is God who gave you the wisdom. Actually, for me, one of the things God blessed me with was when I was in school, I would always make friends with her. Let me use the word 
most stupid, academically, dull, I think is the English word, the dullest would be my friend, dense, eh? those who are very dense, heavy, they have heavy brains, I don't know what dense means, whether that brain has water or whatever, I don't know. So I would make friends with them. You know why? Two reasons. One, I thought I was doing a ministry to them, and they would appreciate. Number two, I would be practicing what I already what? No. By teaching somebody who does not know, I am also revising. Now, some of you don't know that, that when you teach somebody who does not know, you are learning also. You are reminding yourself. But also you are doing a great service to God and to man. Okay, let's go. But be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, that's what they are telling you. Sometimes it's not possible. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. That's a community. A community is of people who are disciplined. It's hard to leave all those things. When you go to Leviticus in the Old Testament, some of you don't like reading the Old Testament because you think Christ is not there. But let me tell you, why they wrote it is because Christ comes from the Old Testament it comes from there. Even when you read the New Testament, you, they quote the Old Testament. So when you go to Leviticus, you, when you read it and you get time and you read it, you will see the basic laws of living with people. The basic, I'm not saying you obey all those laws as they are, as if they are laws of Uganda. No, 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 no. It will just teach you the basic discipline of living in a community with people. I want to thank Reverend Alex. We live together in a community. I know he's home, but I've never been there. But we are friends. He comes to my home to pick me. But have you ever entered my house? Have you? Okay, he has entered my house. I've not entered. I've entered yours when you were living the other side. Yes, but he changed places. But we are in a community and we are friends. And the child learns at my place. I respect him. He's younger than me. I am older than him. He respects me. I respect him. Because it is not about age. It's not about brains. It's not about riches. It's about living together in a community of believers. So that others may look at us and admire us and call Jesus Christ into their hearts. But if we, are, we have fights and quarrels among us, how will the non-believers come to us? May God bless you. She, she brings out the message in a very simple way, like a teacher, okay, yet very clear. Now you know that you are a community, that you are a community. We are a community as a class, as a campus, we are a community. And most importantly, as a church, we are a community. Remember last Sunday I told you that you must belong. Remember that we, we, we looked at the same topic last Sunday? Yes, even next Sunday we are looking at the same topic. Okay. And, and you must belong. You must know the members in this community. They must know you. 
so that when you bring your wedding budget, we are not asking ourselves, who is this one? Really? Some of you may say, but what are you talking about, man of God? I'm talking about real life things, okay? Yeah. In other words, wherever God has planted you, okay, make, establish yourself. Get to know people. Let people know you. Fit in the community. As long as you're not compromising and giving in to the standards of this world. Praise the Lord. Let me ask us to stand. And this message really comes in at a time you're doing exams where you need to support one another. Where you need to discuss where you need to carry each other's burdens. Some of you pocket money is done. The semester is winding, but everything is, due, is really winding up. Eh? And pockets are empty. Maybe some of you walked to church. But I want us to pray. And I want to bless you. I want us to believe this God who is able to do exceedingly, who is able to do abundantly, above all, than we can ask or think or imagine. Our God is able, is, is, is able to support us. Praise the Lord. When, when the early church, when, when, when the apostles came together in Acts chapter 2, on the day of Pentecost, the Bible says that the Spirit of God came upon them. They even began to speak in tongues, in different languages. Even the people from Africa were there. The people from Ethiopia were there. And they were amazed because they could hear what the others were speaking. The point I'm trying to make is that when we come together like this as a community, the power of God comes here. And this power of God is here to help you. It is here to strengthen you. It is here to inspire you. It is here to support you. So I want us to pray. I want you to believe God and, and, and commit that request to God. It could be a cost unit that you're afraid of. Maybe it is coming tomorrow morning. But our God is stronger. He's bigger than that cost unit. Our God is powerful. God's power, God's dunamis is here to help you. It could be a struggle. could be financial. could be tuition. You have not cleared and you know exams are coming at, at nine in the morning. <laughs> but our God is an amazing God. He never runs out of solutions. Is able. I want you to mention that particular challenge before him. He's able. He's able. He asks in his word that I am the Lord of all flesh. Is there anything that is hard for me? Surely there is nothing that is hard for our God. What he did for people like me. <laughs> He's still able to do it today. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He has helped our friends in the past. And he's able to help us today. Hmm. I want you to whisper to God. I want you to tell him. Let your request be known unto him. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. The Bible says that do not be anxious about anything. But through prayer and thanksgiving, let your supplications be known unto God. And then the peace of God, which is greater than we can understand, will guard your heart through Christ Jesus. So it is where 
to this world, call upon God. Let, let that challenge be known unto him. He is the Prince of Peace. He's able. He's able. She will do. She will do. You'll be amazed at what God will do this week. The next week. He has never failed. He's able. Thank you, Lord, because you are able. Thank you, Redeemer, because you are here to help us. Thank you because you are here to go ahead of us, to go behind us like you did with the Israelites. Thank you because you are here to do a new thing. Sobola Mukama Sobola Mukama Sobola Mukikochi Mukama Sobola Mukama Sobola Atu yamba, atu yamba, mukama atu yamba, mukama atu yamba, uti kochi mo, ira atu yamba, mukama atu yamba. I want you to remember that God is in this place. And in this place, God will provide. When Abraham went to the region of Moriah, in, a, in, in Genesis, Genesis chapter 22, Abraham was about to sacrifice his son. He laid him and placed him on top of the wood. And the Lord showed up. The Lord said, do not lay a hand on the boy. And the Lord provided. And the Lord provided. And Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. The Lord will provide. I want to tell you that the Lord will help in this place. The Lord will help. I want you to lift up your hands and call upon the Lord. And call upon Jesus. And he will help you. Lift up your hands and cry out unto him. The Lord will help you. There is power when we meet. We are more than two. We are more than three. His presence is here. His presence is here to support you. His presence is here to inspire you. His presence is here to encourage you. I want you to cry out unto the Lord. The Lord wants to do a new thing. The Lord wants to help you this morning in this place. Forget the failures in the past. Forget the disappointments in the past. Forget what you have been through before and cry out unto him. And the Lord will amaze you. And the Lord will surprise you. Because he never runs out of solutions. What he did before, he's able to do to them. He has helped so many he has never failed. He's here to help you. He's the Lord that supported the Israelites in that long journey to the promised land. He's here to support you. He wants you to finish very well. He wants you to excel. He wants you to, to, to graduate and leave this place victorious. She will do. I want you to trust him. I want you to lift up your heart. I want you to stop crying. I want you to stop lamenting. The Lord is here to help you. Yes, stop asking yourself questions and focus on God and fix your eyes on God. He is the perfecter of our faith. Yes, 
he will do. He himself is here to do, to do. Yes. Beloved, there is power when we meet together, when we come together to pray. Things happen. When the apostles came together, the Spirit of God came upon them. I pray this morning that the Lord may bestow the Spirit of wisdom upon you, the Spirit of understanding, the Spirit of excellence, the Spirit of overcoming, that Spirit that never fails. May the Spirit of God come upon you. May the Lord open the floodgates of heaven and cause that spirit to, to, to rest upon you, to reign on you in the name of Jesus. May the Lord open the heavens. May the Lord release wisdom. May the Lord release and show you even what is coming tomorrow. May the Lord open your spiritual eyes to see what is coming in the paper tomorrow, in this week, in the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord open your heart to receive that that he has for you. May the Lord open your ears to hear, to hear what he's saying. May the Lord help you in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, you are not going to miss fire. You are not going to misinterpret. You are not going to misread instructions. You will understand the instructions. You are not going to fall sick tonight. You are not going to get confused tonight. Yes, you will do your exams tomorrow. The Lord is going to send his angels to support you in that exam room, that chair where you will sit. The Lord will send his angels and these angels shall support you. And his angels shall remind you all that you have discussed, all that you have read. You shall not forget. You shall not be confused in the exam room. It shall go well with you. It shall go well with you. Lord, open the floodgates of heaven and let your people receive. Let your people receive, receive, receive that that you have for them. Lord, from you, let them receive receive open their brains and let them receive understanding let them excel let them excel let them excel in the name of jesus father we rebuke panic we rebuke anxiety i rebuke fear i rebuke every spirit that comes to cause misfiring every spirit that comes that makes us timid the Bible says that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but a spirit of self-control, the spirit that overcomes, the spirit that never fails. Yes, that is the spirit that God has given you. So may you go and overcome. May you go and excel in the name of Jesus. May you go and answer all the questions that I will ask you to answer. May you go and write, yes, and people will be amazed. And your lecturers will be amazed at what the Lord will do through you. Yes. It is finished. It is well with you. It is done because God is here to help you. Because God has done it for you. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And unto you, Lord, we surrender. I surrender these, your children. I surrender. Some of them may not believe in themselves. 
I surrender them to you, to your unfailing grace, to your unfailing mercies. I surrender them to you, Lord. Yes, Lord. I surrender the pens they are going to use to write exams. I surrender where they are going to sit, the chairs where they will sit. Lord, I surrender the papers that they are going to write on. I pray for favor. May you favor them. Favor them. Favor their handwritings. Favor their registration numbers. Favor them in the name of Jesus Christ. No mistake shall be made on their papers. They shall not forget to write their registration numbers. They shall not fall sick. I soak them in the blood of Jesus. They shall not get accidents on the way. Yes, Lord. They shall not get border border accidents as they come. In the name of Jesus. They shall not wake up late. They shall wake up early. They shall be in the exam room early. They shall keep all the instructions in the name of Jesus. They shall not be tempted to copy. They shall not be tempted to enter with unauthorized materials. That they shall trust in you completely. Lord, cause somebody to trust in you. To put their confidence in you, the unfailing God, the Almighty One, the Ancient of Days, the Rock of Ages, our salvation, our fortress, our stronghold, the one who was, who is, and who is to come, the source of wisdom, the source of wisdom. May you bestow wisdom, O God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Abba Father. And so, Lord, I commit each of these, your people, to you. I commit them to you, my Father. May your grace abound during this time, my Father. May you help them, O God. May you enable them, O God. May you support them in every way. To the glory of your name. Now, beloved, may the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the Lord answer you this week. May the name of the God of Jacob set you securely on high and defend you in this examination battle. May he send you help from his sanctuary, from his dwelling place. May the Lord support and strengthen you. May the Lord remember all your offerings. May the Lord remember all your sacrifices this semester. May the Lord accept your burnt offering. May he grant your heart's desires and fulfill all the plans he has for you. The Bible says in Jeremiah 29, 11 that he has a good plan for you to give you hope and the future. A plan known to fail you. The Lord has, a plan. may all those plans come to fruition. May we sing joyously over your victory after these examinations. When the results come back, in the name of our God, may we set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. And the blessing of God that has no sorrow. Blessing of God Almighty who reveals himself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you. May that blessing support you this week. May that blessing cause breakthroughs in every way. May that blessing go before you even as you enter the exam room. May that blessing surround you to protect you. May God's blessing be upon every paper that you will write. May God's blessing never leave you all the days of your life. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, from us, praise the Lord. From us here, we want to wish you God's blessings and excellence, not just passing. Go and excel. I have given you my blessing. Go and excel in the name of Jesus. Go and excel. Don't fear. Go and excel.
Go and excel. So it is well with you this week. It is well. It is well. When you, you jump on a border border, don't fear. It is well with you. You are in God's hands. Because our efforts can yield to nothing without God's blessing. So may that blessing be upon you and uh, prosper you in your examinations. Surely we shall come back here to give thanks after Senate when the results come back. We shall give thanks here. Here. Many of you are going to get first classes. Amen. Hey, you are going to get them. Praise the Lord. Amen. Papa, do you believe that? You believe that? Amen. Amen. So thank you very much. Our Sunday services will continue to go on until the semester ends. So Sunday we are here again to pray with you. Please come. Come. We'll be here. I wish you every blessing. May God guide you all through to the glory of his name. Hallelujah. Uh, hey, we are completing service, but we need to sing him 270. Please join me as we sing to the Lord. Nine sanyu mumoyo, munda mumoyo wange. Nine sanyu, nine sanyu, nine sanyu mumoyo. Mumoyo, munda mumoyo wange. Oh yo Yesu, su ayaka yaka. Yesu ayaka. Yes, I am. 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 Y